So it's going to be a great and exciting uh, session today because I see all my professionals in the house and I'm excited and the people are excited as well. Uh, so thank you, thank you. If you have a question, please leave your question. Uh, while we're waiting, I'm just going to quickly, you know, run through how this day will go. We're going to get started by uh, introducing our speakers. Afterwards, we're going to um, have each of them speak for 10 minutes uh, on the topic of how to expand into international market with your import export business post COVID. Afterwards, we're going to have um, someone from Hagoa, she's an Hagoa specialist. She's going to be speaking on how you can actually leverage Hagoa trade policy to export into the US. Afterwards, we're going to take our Q&A. We've got, we've curated a couple of your questions. Uh, our panelists are going to be taking your questions. Afterwards, we're going to call it a day. So let's be excited and we're gonna get started very soon. Uh, I want to welcome you to the first of our monthly virtual B2B webinar. Uh, my name is Benga Omotayo and today we shall be discussing on how to attract international buyers in your export and import business post COVID. Uh, like I said before, I would like for you to take a minute uh, to drop a little note into the chat box and tell us where you're joining us from. We would like to know, uh, we'd like to hear your story. Um, and I just want to encourage you, if you stay to the end of this webinar, we are giving out uh, a bonus to everyone who stay to the hand. It's going to be an exciting time. We have all our panelists in the house. And I just want to ask that you, you take the time to, to, to enjoy the flow of, of this webinar. Um, thank you so much. So we're getting started. I'm going to say a little bit about the organization, the US Africa Trade and Business Network. Uh, we are a New York State Incorporated nonprofit organization. I'm not sure if you all can see my screen. Um, it's very important that you see my screen. I want to be sure you're seeing my screen. We are a New York nonprofit organization working to increase uh, African and the US economic ties by connecting organizations and businesses with new buyers and supplies and investment opportunity. We do this by networking event <clears throat> and trade exhibitions. We host the US Africa or business expo and many of the connections made at this event has led to long-term relationship and strategic partnership. Uh, we had the US Africa Trade and Business Expo last year during the UN General Assembly and it was a very successful event. In fact, one of the reasons why we are hosting this webinar is we're trying to pivot because we know that people may not participate as much as they would love to do because of the restrictions that may come uh, due to the pandemic. So that is why we're doing this. Also, we help businesses navigate entry into the US market, uh, through market access consultation, uh, training programs, trade missions and B2B events like this. Uh, we produce the US Africa Business Expo, like I said. We offer monthly virtual uh, webinar like this. We offer educational and relevant trade content through our, 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 blog, our blog site, which is a blog at usafricaop.com. And now for those looking at doing business in any of the African countries, we have representation across Africa through are highly trained, experienced country representatives and trade organizations, which we, we've partnered with. Now, with this network of local agents and distributors, we provide local representations in Africa, which includes identifying sales and marketing opportunities, um, managing local regulations and handling all of your logistics, research uh, regulations and general advisory consulting. Now, our flagship 
service is matchmaking. We have a matchmaking service. And basically what we do is we save you time and money instead of you try traveling all over the world. We save you time and money. And basically what we do is we, con we connect you with those we think are match for what you're looking for. If the two of you match, we would prepare your profile. We would send it to them. If they are approved and they want to meet with you, we will set up the meeting between both of you. So this is one of the things we do. And so basically we identify a prospect. We reach out to them on your behalf. If they agree to meet with you based on your profile, we set up a meeting and we take it from there. So that's basically who we are. And I know that uh, this event is also going to, I'll tell you a little bit more. You can see on my screen, a couple of the things that I've talked about as well. Um, I'm also going to quickly jump from, I'll give you a minute to look at my screen. Then I'll move over to our partner. We just want to recognize Leo Africa today because the, they're based in Nigeria. They basically do what we do. And this is one of our partners together that we would be helping to help you fulfill what your organization is aimed at achieving. Now, a little bit about me. Uh, I basically help businesses navigate entry into the US and African market. My specialties include international trade, event and digital marketing. Uh, I'm the author of the book, How to Start Your Business While Employed. I'm a shattered marketer with the US, with the UK Shattered Institute of Marketing. I'm an entrepreneur with 15 years of experience and I have a couple of businesses that I run on the side. That's a little bit about myself. I'm going to be talking about our panelists. Uh, the first person that I would like you to meet today is me, Jung Hibbit. Uh, you can see our profile on the screen. I'm going to quickly go to my notes to read a little bit about me, Young. She's the executive director for the Global Chamber of Baltimore in Washington. She's the president of Robert and Willem LLC. She's an international trade and marketing consulting firm. And she has an extensive expertise in the area of international trade, marketing, journalism, media, finance, and the US government. Uh, she's currently the executive director of Global Chamber, which is a worldwide body of organizations, of businesses, all over the world. She holds exceptional understanding and knowledge of both business world to companies seeking new and dynamic opportunities in cross-border commerce. That is me, Young. I'm also going to be speaking about my second panelist. His name, uh, can you all still see my screen? I think my screen uh, went off, I'm not sure. What I'm to, my screen went off. Okay. Thank you for that. So I'm going to also be speaking about our second panelist is Dr. Denning M. Beach. And you can see on the screen a little bit about him. Uh, I'm going to quickly read uh, some of his bio. He's the CEO and president of Go Africa Global. His company promotes direct production and go to market product offering for African commodities like cashew, coffee, cocoa, peanut, nut, and teas. She is into retail for local and global market, which is B2C. Uh, they are into production of customs and specialized products for local and major partners. There's a lot of things I can say about Dr. Denny. Uh, in the course of the uh, presentation, you will all get to learn more about Dr. Denny. And so without wasting much of your time, I'm going to jump in straight into the webinar and I'm going to be asking um, a panelist uh, to take on and take it away. Uh, Dr. Denny Miyoung, which of you would like to start first? I would like each of you to take 10 minutes each and tell us and speak to us about how to get international connections, how to how to attract international buyers for your product or for your commodity. And of course, we're talking about people with export ready products. We're not talking about people who have not done the due diligence. Those who are ready, ready, ready to launch out into the US market, the biggest uh, consumer market in the whole world. I'm going to leave it open 
Uh, whoever wants to go first should please proceed. Um, I'll go first. Thank you, Dr. Denning. Okay. Uh, to jump right in to, and make the best use of 10 minutes, um, the first thing I would say, if you have market ready product, um, you need to have some proof points that your product is market ready um, to have done the research and your price points and presentation of your product collateral uh, to make sure that, that, that you have a preliminary fit uh, with the market such as price and the type and variety of the product to be available. Um, I saw some of the stuff at the bottom. I can tell you uh, to, to make it best for everyone is um, we've been looking into cassava. Uh, cassava is widely grown in Africa. In the U.S., uh, there's a mismatch, to put it bluntly. Uh, most of the uh, gluten-free product comes from Latin America for cassava and not from Africa, it's basically zero. Um, the reason I mention that is that it's cassava flour um, and maybe cassava chips. Um, you can just Google online to any of the stores and you'll see that cassava chips uh, sell for a huge uh, markup as compared to uh, in Africa. Uh, cassava is gluten-free, so it's a substitute here um, because of the nutrition and health context in the U.S. Um, for having none wheat or just gluten-free flour for pasta, pizza, uh, and other things that cassava or wheat flour is used for, such as chips and the like. Um, the other aspect is, um, as far as the matchmaking and, and the like concerned, is uh, once you have the product, uh, you pretty much have to be transparent with a buyer as to the availability of the product. Um, a lot of deals fall through, um, because the, the seller doesn't have that information readily available and the buyer goes to another source um, in the sense that um, you should know that the common terminology and pricing is called SIF, that's cargo insurance and freight. Um, that's a common term and, and also payment terms. Are you looking for um, an LC on site? Um, that's generally um, favorable. Um, if you're asking for a deposit, um, that tends to cause the sellers to go to a supplier that does not have that. Um, other insights, I think I posted a link for templates. Um, I can also post a, a link for you for Hermes. That's a credit insurer that can insure you if you extend credit to a buyer in the U.S. Um, if you complete the paperwork for that, I'll just send you a link to the site. Uh, that is something that kind of eases the transition for the customer. Again, I think uh, if you have your collateral ready and you have a favorable uh, website and all those details um, and proper presentation of your product uh, from Africa, you should be successful in a sense that um, you also, um, I know that we, most of us are from Africa, uh, you will probably have to assume that your buyer is reluctant to buy from Africa. If that's the case, um, you may have to over-educate the customer on your product and the shipping ports and the logistics, you, you have to paint a picture to walk them through getting your product from Africa to the US. You may also uh, be prepared to send the customer a sample of your product, though that could be kind of costly and via DHL or other shipping methods, but it does establish the confidence uh, with the buyer and the seller in the US market and to the US market is more is more applicable to um, or used to getting products directly from Africa. So um, I think I used up about seven or eight minutes of my time. Um, I would leave it now for someone to ask me a question or something. I think that's the, probably the best use of the remaining time because I think I've given you some very strategic and tactical information. Thank you, Dr. Danny. Um, mm -hmm. So the 10 minutes is not the entire time. You still have about half hour to take more questions. So okay. All right. I'm like, I can take feeling like 10 minutes minute for these all. Yeah, yeah, you still have uh, about half hour to. Okay. No, um, I can, yeah, well, what I'll do is this, um, you kind of get the bio. Um, I'll send anyone a link to the site. We we sell Go Africa. We, we also do B2C. We sell Go Africa products on Amazon nationwide. Um, I think if someone wants to see 
uh, something as example to copy or duplicate, you could easily just take um, our, our posting on Amazon of how the products presented to say you do just emulate or, or make your product look similar. That is typically um, how things are presented in the US market. Um, again, like I said, that if your product is, if you have collateral and in presentation, a buyer um, through this network may probably easily ask you to send them a sample if, that, if your product is not here in the US, just for them to review and the like. And um, I will always encourage someone to um, have an artist or someone put your product in the best light if it's retail, if it's consumer based, with pictures and the like and the story and to, to paint a picture for your product of its usage um, if it's a consumer based product. And, and, and don't assume that someone may know uh, how to use or best apply for your product. Uh, that is uh, some other advice that I will provide. Again, I will send you a couple more links to templates um, for business documents that um, I have noticed that some users don't necessarily have uh, that you can easily get for zero to no cost as uh, far as presenting, uh, presenting yourself and your business arrangements to particular customers. Thank you so much, Dr. Denin, for graciously uh, agreeing to share that template, which I know costs a lot of money when you do. No, I, I just shared the template link. Uh, it's a right. template link that is, is, is close to zero cost for the templates, but it has most of the business documents um, that you could be looking for that you just customize to use. So you don't have to start from scratch for a lot of negotiated documents, uh, you know, for such as consultants and for suppliers and for NDAs. Thank you, Dr. Denning. And mm -hmm. if you have any question for Dr. Denning, he still has two, he actually has two more minutes in his slot. So if you have any question, you can leave your question in the chat box. Uh, mm -hmm. We would ask him to take it. Uh, mm -hmm. While we're waiting for you to put it in your question, I'm just going to jump right straight into Medium uh, to please, um, you know, take it over. Thank you, Dr. Danny. Okay, you're welcome. I'll continue to add things to the chat. Thank you. So guys, keep your eyes into the chat box. What we would also do, we would collate all of this content and email it to each and every one of you. All right, Dr. Danny, before you take a million, Dr. Danny, someone is saying, what a phonio it is. The person is asking if it's gluten-free. Do you know anything about Phonio, I, I don't know what. Uh, I have, I, I have not heard of Phonio. I don't know if it's a, what type of product is it? I can Google it, but if the person wants to say uh, what it is, um, I, I do know that because the reason I mentioned cassava is it has the best um, match to replace uh, wheat in cakes, um, pies, and other things that wheat is used for. So that's why it's a preference for, um, Cassava. I could look into funnel, but I don't know. And and if you you probably need more information, like what is funnel, uh, what's its availability, uh, quantity, and etc. And have you done testing uh, with funnel for the substitution of wheat? Um, that is what a if you're asking a buyer to buy it, that's one of the things they want to know. You could say what what funnel, but you will probably have to give us more information as to how do you substitute it as opposed to cassava. Thank you so much, Dr. Danny. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask Mijian to please um, start our presentation. I'm going to look for your presentation. Uh, let me see if I can make it bigger. Um, all right, Mijian, I think your presentation is up. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And um, uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, with this uh, prestigious groups of um, uh, entrepreneurs. I see you know, some people actually joining in from Nigeria, Africa, um, and you know, some are in New York and the United States. And um, I appreciate uh, invitation from um, Benga and then USA Africa Business Hub. Um, I uh, am not on uh, Africa expert per se, uh, but I am uh, expert in international business. 
And when it comes down to uh, international business, uh, you know, cross-border commerce, uh, I believe there is uh, some uh, fundamental, you know, the principles or either uh, uh, the things that, you know, that you have to really know in order to uh, succeed in different market. Different market, I mean, is uh, people different, language different, culture different, business systems different. So uh, it really ma it doesn't matter, um, you know, you are trying to uh, sell something from uh, Africa to overseas anywhere else. And also, you know, the businesses in the United States to overseas, I think that there is uh, some uh, good things and the fundamental things that I wanted to share with you uh, that I learned and I also uh, teach uh, and advise my clients uh, all over the world, uh, mainly, um, well, well, Benga explained, um, you know, uh, what I do, but uh, I'll just briefly uh, mention a little bit more. Um, I, I'm wearing a couple of hats right now, uh, president for Robert and William LLC, uh, which is an uh, international trade consulting firm. Um, I help uh, companies mainly uh, in Asia and the United States uh, uh, try to enter a uh, different market uh, uh, with, you know, uh, market entry strategy and strategy planning, market research, and uh, even setting up local office uh, in foreign countries. But uh, in this case, I'm focusing on mainly US and Asia. Uh, in that regard, I also do international marketing communication, helping clients with overseas marketing promotion, uh, trade missions, export, um, um, export promotion, uh, international public relation, and also do uh, cross-cultural training and then seminar, which is a very important part in international business. Um, as uh, Gengba mentioned, I'm also uh, executive director for Global Chamber. Um, uh, Washington and Baltimore area. Uh, Global Chamber helps uh, companies and communities grow business across the border uh, more effectively and with less risk. Uh, we have about 525 metros uh, around the globe and we provide connections and information for members to grow businesses through uh, warm introduction and sharing resources and education and things like that, just like what uh, your group uh, is doing. So, um, but today's topic is export and, you know, the import and how to attract more buyers and increase your businesses after COVID. I think, um, in my mind, uh, Dr. Beach, you know, presented really great uh, technical and then also really, uh, you know, the tactical, you know, the information, uh, what you really need to know and, you know, what actually goes into uh, the making uh, that, you know, your business uh, uh, venture success. Uh, I would like to actually approach it from it a little bit more like a market entry, uh, the point of view. Um, so if you are in, uh, wherever else, in this case in Africa, and you want to uh, sell, you know, the, your product and services within the United States. And actually the direct uh, export and an import is a very uh, simple way of market entry, but there are many other different ways to actually you enter uh, in the uh, target market. There are, you know, the joint ventures and, you know, the distributions and a lot of things uh, are the uh, really well understood out there. But first First of all, uh, I think that the question that I like all of you to think about is uh, uh, why you want to sell to the United States and why you want to enter uh, the U.S. I think we uh, pass uh, the one uh, actually diagram uh, which uh, I found on you know the LinkedIn uh, one of my you know the LinkedIn uh, connect uh, connection actually put it out and then I think that's really great illustrations of um, uh, this economic power and the lucrativeness of this consumer market in the United States. That actually shows the United States, um, the GDP, almost $20 uh, trillion. Uh, it makes up about 24.4% of world uh, GDP. Um, in that diagram, um, you cannot see any other single country has uh, that much of output. Um, you see um, the green, you know, the areas, um, the Europe, you know, in, in individual single, you know, the countries make up small percentage, but, you know, if you block them together, it 
it's a significant, but uh, as a single country, uh, I don't think that there is any other uh, countries that, you know, uh, present this much of uh, the opportunities. Uh, U.S. market highlights, um, GDPs, as I said, 20 um, U.S. trillion dollars. Consumer purchases goes about 14 to 15 uh, trillion dollars. Uh, 328 million U.S. population here, and among them is 127.59 million U.S. household. They consume and they buy things, all sort of the things. U U.S. median household income, uh, it keeps changing, but uh, 2018, uh, 78,635 before taxes and then continue increasing. This country is a country of uh, businesses. 30.2 million businesses are operating and then making money. And world-class transportation, advertising, and great financing, people uh, can buy things even on credit and you know, financial institutions encourage them to buy. Uh, so I think uh, overall, uh, there is a no doubt that the United States market really presents great opportunities for uh, all other uh, uh, companies in located, you know, the overseas um, to enter and then tap into, you know, the, the potential. Uh, just a quick, uh, I think the data just I, I gather, uh, put it on uh, the slide is that a U.S. Africa trade um, uh, is a pretty good, you know, the trade going on between two ways, and um, I think uh, there's a slight more. Uh, U.S. import than, you know, the, uh, the export to the, the Africa. However, if you actually take a look at uh, the total import, uh, the U.S. import, U.S. spends more than 2.6 trillion on imports from all over the world, like, you know, bring goods and things over 200 countries. But uh, despite this huge and lucrative trade opportunity, and also a large African diaspora community in the United States. Africa's sale to the United States only make up 1.4% um, of uh, America's total import in 2018. So that's uh, a, a uh, quick uh, you know, the, uh, data that I wanted to share. But uh, the key thing is this uh, American market offers great promises. Um, you know, you have a great services or the product. It is a market to come in and really the tackle uh, because it is vast. And then you show, you know, uh, it was shown that, but it really must be understood before anyone can succeed in this market. Um, uh, if you look at this uh, history of the United States commerce, uh, it really teaches a good lesson that while some really foreign companies have had a great success in this country, also many have also failed. And uh, if you study that, you know, the most common reason uh, for the failure uh, is really the lack of a correct knowledge of the American market that I mean is market, market, American consumer, and their psychology, and, um, and a lack of, you know, the commercializations and commercial uh, adaptation uh, of your product and services to this uh, different market. So, I mean, sometimes the truth is a very, very simple thing, but a lot of people just ignore uh, the very basic thing and then make really costly, costly uh, mistake. Um, I put some, uh, you know, companies pictures uh, on my slide, um, which a little bit uh, after two more after uh, Gengba. Uh, yeah, maybe you don't remember uh, this, you know, the brand or this, the product. Uh, because they failed here in the United States. Um, they are not um, really small or, you know, they didn't uh, have uh, good companies per se, but if you study, you know, the, the reason why these are actually failing is really the lack of understanding of the market. Well, Japanese automaker Suzuki, you see that the, the small car there, there, for example, they introduced uh, the Samurai brand to the United States in, uh, 85, but then, you know, filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy in 12, uh, 2012. Um, 
the type of the car, the small car, it was really the standard in Japan, but Americans have no appetite and very little interest in those cars. So before they really putting in you know, a lot of resources in coming in and trying to find you know, the market and, and things like that, I think the very first the beginning uh, they didn't do uh, well is really understanding uh, the market and you have to be really flexible to adopt uh, uh, your strategy in that case. British grocery chain Tesco, we don't see them anymore here in the United States, but they were everywhere one time. 2007, they entered. By then, you know, they had China, India, Malaysia, uh, across the European Union, you know, presence. But when they actually coming in, uh, they didn't know these American consumers, uh, the psychology and their preferences. Uh, uh, so they were not really as receptive to their grocery chain model. So it filed the bankruptcy in 2013. Um, hundred, you know, uh, Montaditos, uh, it was the sandwich restaurant chain uh, originated in Spain. Uh, they providing smaller size of sandwiches over, you know, the wine or different European styles of, uh, you know, uh, the sandwich shop. But it miserably failed here in the United States because um, American consumers are not accustomed to drink wine during lunchtime and sandwich flavors that uh, Americans are really familiar with and their favorite are different from what they are offering. So it's a very uh, difficult mistake. Uh, the other one is e-cigarette uh, uh, maker Juul. In this case, uh, they actually uh, invested a lot in South Korean market, but they exit actually this year. They failed uh, uh, to um, gain tractions uh, in there because they didn't understand this uh, government regulations, how strong it is, and it was just impossible mar market you know, for them to penetrate. So these are the things, um, I mean, there's many, 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 many uh, examples out there like this. So I think the, what the question is really, the first thing that you have to ask is really, where is my buyer or client and how do I find them and, and you know, how to sell to them that's not the first question you have to ask the first question is you have to ask if we were to come to the united states market is u.s market is really right for you is that really right for you and then do i really know the market to be successful here and am i really ready to enter the market i think the question has to be reframed at, at that way and then you will find the uh, good answers and a well prepared um, one of the things uh, that I'm doing is I uh, took up on the CEO role for a company um, called the Consulting Professors Online. So we do provide the US market entry e-seminars um, to strategic uh, marketplaces uh, globally. Uh, Australia is one of them and Germany and Italy and so on. So what we're really teaching them is really market entry involves uh, three steps. Um, it's not just going in and try to sell. First step is you really have to investigate. Uh, what is your market? Is yours is B2B? Are you B2C talking about? You want to sell to B2G or even B2I, internet, right? Um, you have to have a clear understanding where you are actually targeting it and geographical wise, you know, target region, cultural diversity, and people's preferences, and all those things have to be first studied and then make sure that, you know, that you, that market is right for you or not. Um, and I think the good idea is actually introduce your product and services to the specialist, the first of all, early feedback, and then maybe change some, modify, and then change the strategy. I think that is a very necessary step. A lot of the times are uh, ignored. And then you have to prepare really, watch your, you know, the market entry plan. Um, do you have really necessary economic resources? Um, you can really, you know, penetrate in the United States market and find those uh, buyers and, and things like that without much of necessary economic resources. So you have to know how much it actually costs. Am I actually ready for or not? Otherwise, where do I get uh, you know, those financings and get prepared, right? And your prices, um, you have to know, are you going to make a profit or not? Is it going to be a profit? fitable, you know, the plan, do you have that plan also? You're gonna go direct, indirect, or mixed hybrid distribution channels? 
uh, in order to that you have to understand how those markets actually formed here and then operate uh, in the United States market, right? And the third one is really implementing. Now with that market entry plan, it's confirmed, you fine tune, and even you want to come in here in the United States and you know, legal entities form, bank connections starts, initial operations scheduled to start, supply chain established, production service activity starts, your financial instruments are confirmed, marketing and lead development starts, exporting assistant activity and what about your repair centers and all the kind of things it's you know uh, have to be uh, formed here in the US so it involves a lot of things um, if you uh, go further down there is a like a three um, uh, slide I mean the three flyers of promo together um, that's actually uh, Australian market, the, the program that we are actually offered right now. So uh, it's a step one, step two, and then step three. Um, this is currently offered to Australian market. But if any uh, companies in, you know, uh, in uh, Africa really wanted to uh, come to the U.S. and then make the find uh, the formula to be successful, I'd uh, like to, uh, you know, I'll be happy to discuss and then I'll let you know more in detail how these things work for you later. And lastly, um, I think there was a, some uh, uh, research was done in the past about bone global. Uh, bone global meaning, um, you know, in the past, you know, the people, the businesses to start, and then if in order to go to uh, global, it took years and years. You start to small, and then you start to selling in your neighbor, and then next door, and uh, next state maybe. But these days, with this incredible uh, technologies, you could be just the born global. Uh, just the day one. Your markets are just not in your area, but you know, globally. How exciting is that? And um, I think that this research shows that uh, uh, seven successful characteristics of this born global company, and they pointing out uh, you must have a global vision from inception. And you do have managers with this international experience and you do have international business network and you exploit preemptive technology and marketing, unique intangible asset, closely linked product or service extension, closely coordinated worldwide organization. So if you uh, follow you know, the, this thing and then you do have that type of really uh, the spread or you know, resources and you develop those resources, I think uh, all of them today, I think in this era of you know, the technology and global era, you could be really the bone global and be a success story. So with that, um, uh, mine was not too tactical. However, I think you know I cannot say um, uh, enough the importance of you know you make sure that you know the, your product and, and all is really ready for this market, uh, and this market is right for you or not. Uh, in order to avoid a lot of mistake, uh, costly mistake uh, in the end. So thank you very much, and um, I will um, looking forward to actually answering some questions from you guys. Thank you so much, Midian. Thank you so much for taking that time to take us through the process of how you can attract international buyers. I know you went into the basics. You have to do your carry out your due diligence. You have to be ready. Uh, like Dr. Denny was, you know, telling me some days back, it's not so much about me wanting to come to the biggest um, consumer market. Is me doing my due diligence, me getting myself ready to be able to maximize the opportunities that exist in this country. There's so many, I mean, the government is doing all they could. Talking of Agua, the government came about this trade policy and they wanted Africa to bring product. I mean, geographically, we are more positioned to bring product and commodities into the US other than more than other countries. But when you look at the volume of trade, we're not doing so well. So I understand. So that is why organizations like ourselves, we came up with this platform so we can be able to facilitate that two-way communication. We can bridge the gap between what is needed and what we have to do 
in Africa to be able to maximize this opportunity. So I thank you very well for taking that time. And if you're, if you're listening, if you're just joining us, I've had Dr. Denning and me young, they spoke about how you can attract international buyers into the US. And I'm just going to quickly invite someone to spend five minutes. And the reason I'm going to have her come is because um, we've had a lot of questions on Agua related questions. A lot of people in Africa with first and foremost, everybody knows that Africans consume a lot of commodities like Gary, like, uh, uh, like, uh, like yam, you know, a lot of African food products, you know, and we consume that a lot. So people have been asking, how can they do this? So I have someone who is going to break it down in just five minutes that it's not as difficult as you think. If you carry out your due diligence, you can be an exporter of this product into the US and you can be successful at doing that. So having said that, I'm going to be inviting um, our next speaker. Uh, give me a second. I want to make sure I pronounce her title very well. Her name is Bolanle Emmanuel. She's the Chief Trade Officer for the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. She's an expert on exporting through Agoa to the US. So I'm going to ask her to please uh, take it away and just speak to us for the next five minutes. You have to unmute from your side. You are not muted from our side. Thank you. Yes, Balanle, you're live. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And I thank you, Mr. Omotosho, for giving me the opportunity to speak on Agua. Basically, exporting under Agua is quite easy if you know the nitty gritties about it. First of all, I would like to talk about the products. There are about 6,500 products, Agua eligible products, which could be exported from Africa, African countries, Sub Saharan African countries into the US. However, we need to know much about these products. What are the specifications of this product? What are the uh, HTS code of this specific product? Because each product has an HTS code. All these needs to be known. The traceability, the origin of the product needs to be known for anyone that wants to export any of these products into the US. So having known the product, you need to have a good knowledge of packaging, which is required. Quite well, a lot of uh, Africans, they try as much as possible to export their products but from our own country here. We're trying as well, but we need to do a lot more on uh, packaging and labeling because it's quite very important for anyone consuming in USA to be able to know what and what the content of the products are, the calories content, everything has to be stated. So packaging and labeling is quite important. And then on the product too, the certification is also very important. A lot of people want to export some products, but they don't know what certifications are required. If you are exporting food items, you know that the food items you must have a um, FDA certification, Food and Drug Administration certification by the US. And apart from that, you need to have uh, your certificates of origin to ensure that it is not a kind of transshipment. And then you need to know your US buyers, which is always a challenge to African people and particularly Nigerians. Nigerian exporters, they have the products or they don't know how to get uh, the buyers of their products. And then when you know you have the products and you don't have uh, buyers, we encourage them to participate in trade fairs and trade missions so that they'll be able to uh, get to know what products people need and be able to meet one-on-one -on -one people that are interested in buying their products. And then we also talk about pricing for this product. Pricing of the products for export is quite uh, important because a lot of our people, they, uh, they produce under very stringent conditions. So the, the issue of overpricing or underpricing, we encourage them to avoid that. And they should also have the knowledge of uh, the trade terms, the income terms, which is quite very important. And then the procedures and documentation, 
it cannot run away from it. For anybody exporting to US in commercial quantities, be it food, you have to do prior notice for food. And if you are doing prior notice, you know that uh, you are filing your documents, and then you have uh, the whether you are the one uh, preparing the uh, declaring agents or the buyer specifying who to clear the product, then you have to agree and know with that. And then you have to claim a one. If you, are, if you want to export duty and quota free to the United States, because that's the whole essence of Agua, then you must have all the documents intact. Any PC can help for you to be able to export. You must have an export license. Nigerian Export Promotion Council issues export license at the cost of 1000 13500 With 13500 you could do registration online from the NEPC website, www.nepc.gov.ng, or you could visit any of our uh, smart offices, original offices in Nigeria to do the registration, which doesn't take more than 24 hours, maximum 48 hours. NEPC, as a federal government regulatory agency, we are very passionate about Nigerian exports as being able to diversify the economy. And then um, what we do is we try as much as possible to get to know what our uh, registered exporters are doing and we ensure that they're export ready. By export readiness, I mean that you have the product, you have the certification, your origin, everything is intact, such that when you are uh, you have an order to meet, you'll be able to meet it up not running elter scatter from one um, person to the other. Say, for instance, you want to export uh, Gary to the United States. You need to have all the consignments ready, not buying from different people because definitely the content will be different in parameters in content. So ideally, you should have everything export ready in sustainable quantities so that you'll be able to meet, exporters will be able to meet their orders. And we also render technical assistance through the uh, USAID and the West African Trade Hub in Nigeria. Basically, that is all NEPC does. And we build capacities of exporters. We organize trainings, seminars, where uh, we get to know the challenges being faced by the exporters and then uh, we give them necessary assistance to boost their export business. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bolanle, for that uh, detailed process for anyone in Nigeria or Africa who would like to take their products into the U.S. You can see that it's not so much about bringing in international buyers. It's more of us preparing ourselves and be ready uh, before they come. They say opportunity meets preparation. We have to be prepared. We have to have our company registered. We have to have all the licenses. If you, for example, if you want to export Gary to the US, you have to make sure that the facility has been inspected. You have the license, like she said, and you have to have the US uh, FDA approver. They also will carry out their own inspection of your facility. But all of these can be done through our platform. We have you know, network with people in Nigeria and across Africa who would help you go through this entire process. Uh, for us, the most important thing is Africa and Africans have to leverage the vast opportunity that America presents to us. I mean, uh, think about it with the, the, the ratification of the trade agreement. Now Africa is so vast, we have 1.3 billion market without frontiers. We have to take advantage of this massive market. We have all the resources and we have the proximity to make this work. And sometimes when we rely on the government, things get slower, but we have a lot of people who are standing in gap. We have Dr. Denny, myself, uh, like um, Bolan Laser, Nigerian Export uh, Promotion Council. I have one of my uh, colleagues here as well. You know, there are a lot of organizations 
who are doing the same thing, Lurkenberg LLC. You know, all of these organizations intend to facilitate that ease, to make it easier for you. So please, let's do our diligence. Thank you, Bolanle. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a question, um, and, and I'm going to, and I think I saw that questions in the chat box here. And this is to Dr. Denny and to Mijang. Uh, either of you can take it. You know, in an article I wrote recently on our blog at uh, blog usafrica.com i spoke about some of the changes coming to international trade post covid you know whether we like it or not there's going to be limits on how people move from one location to the other um first people people would not be keen to travel for the fear of you know contacting anything on the other hand america itself may be a little bit they may not come out openly but there may be some little restrictions that may make it difficult for people to move freely. And so I spoke about this, so I spoke about the need for companies to pivot and seek ways to transact their business without necessarily having to travel from one place to the other. So, you know, doing this would require a lot of trust and having a lot of systems in place to protect yourself. Because if you are in Africa, you want to trust, you don't want to travel, but you want to transact business in America, you know, it has to involve a lot of trust. So my question is, what advice would you give an exporter who is ready with an export ready product? And you know, how, what advice would you give such a person in approaching and building a lasting relationship? You know, while they're there, you're in Africa, you want to transact business here. What are the processes you should put in place to protect yourself and to elicit trust for you, if either of you, any of you can take that question. I'll try to answer that. Okay, it's two things. Uh, if you're from Africa to the U.S., the U.S. Um, framework of doing business and everything is as the law says. It's, it's no ambiguity. The trust is pretty much in the contract, not in someone's words. So um, that's why I sent out the templates of agreements. If someone in the U.S. typically has agreed to those terms and you, you were quantitative in the terminology that you listed, then um, the person would abide by the terms. You can always go for legal counsel here. Um, it's not generally that expensive. But again, you have to be pretty granular and specific. Um, if something says it's due or you're going to deliver in 30 days, uh, you cannot have an excuse. It has to be delivered in 30 days. Uh, if you cannot meet that, then you need to have some leeway in the terminology that you used in your legal document. That's what I've sent people. Um, I think if, if we've had some sidebar discussions. Uh, typically, uh, when, a, when a buyer here has said they have problems dealing with someone in Africa, which is why you're having an impediment, it's generally because Overall, the African supplier supplied the product. They just didn't supply it on the terms. If someone said 30 days and you took 60, you may have applied, but, but you didn't agree to the original terms and they've lost, lost money because they may have been trying to sell your product or produce. So I would guide you to that level of precision. Um, this network can easily send you to legal advisors that can advise you. Um, again, um, some suppliers will ask you to send a sample. Um, you should be prepared to do that. Um, you can easily ask them to cover the price of shipment if you know the price of shipment of a given sample for your product. So you may want to do some research and investigate that as well. We typically send samples. We recently sent a sample to Spain uh, from Africa, actually. Uh, and the supplier, uh, the buyer paid for shipment in advance for the supply. So, it's really, like I said, just getting very precise on the transaction itself. Um, the, the U.S., if you're dealing with the U.S., it doesn't like a lot of small talk. So you want to specifically get to your point and issue and address the issue at hand if someone is in a transaction with you uh, and be very responsive in addressing the matter or, the, or issues of concern that a potential buyer of your product may have. And, uh, and not make the assumption or say, oh, it will work out, or it's great, or it's best, or, or it's fine. It doesn't work. You really have to just 
affirm that they've accepted your explanation and that you you've lived to the terms of the agreement or the request that was that was sent to you yes um I mean, just hearing from Dr. Beach uh, is impeccable. The answer is really right to the point. I mean, I can really add more. Uh, the, the transparency and then living up to the term, that's the really American business way. So uh, when I actually explain those steps, and first thing you know, you have to know your market you are dealing with. That includes not just the size or the buyers or not, very important thing is how business is done. And uh, that's really the, the formula, you know, the, for the long-term success and long-term relationship with the business. And in that regard, America is very protecting consumer rights and consumer advocacy. Therefore, the, um, we talk a lot about, you know, the food related product today from Africa, compliance to FDA. If you know, you know, how it works, um, you know, you, have a record of really non-compliance, it's harder to do the business. Uh, you know, it will stop at the customs and a lot of a costly mistake could happen uh, for you. So know the rules and, you know, the contract and then deliver and transparency. And that's why some of the times I do this cross cultural training because a lot of Asian uh, businesses and companies, uh, they do things differently over there, you know, just uh, shake hands and, you know, they know that, that that's the done deal. And it's a very different thing, right? So I think that Africa has its own Africa thing, but you know, they really have to learn and know about how business is done. And uh, in that regard, I think the transparency really following the, the term uh, is the key for developing long-term relationship uh, with uh, businesses here in the US. Thank you, Miji, and I appreciate your chi you know, chiming that in. Uh, Thank you to both of you. I'm sure our listeners are taking notes and everyone is getting empowered. Uh, because of time, there's so many questions. I'm going to alternate the questions. So uh, either of you, uh, I'm just gonna you know, ask one person to comment on one. If people need more clarifications, we have all of your details. They're free to reach out to you uh, at any point in time. Now, there's this question, it says, what platform and resources can give my business more international exposure and network in the US? And I'm just going to quickly say, one of the things you can do is attend an event. We host the US Africa Business Expo in September, and here you see buyers and sellers. People see you, they see samples of your product, what you sell, what you buy. Those who are looking for partners in Africa, they check you out, they look at your profile, and they ask you questions. You can have side events, you can have side meetings. Like I said before, if you cannot physically come, we have a matchmaking service that will do a video matchmaking with you and your potential buyers. There's so many other programs. We have the mission trips as well, which is coming up. And so there's so many opportunities. We also have a hub. We have a hub where we would list your product, we would invite people who are interested in buying or engaging with your service to take a look at what we have, which is your product that we've listed in our hub. So these are many more uh, ways that you can, uh, you know, promote and give visibility to your product. So because of time, I'm just gonna go straight to the next question. Now it says, uh, I know Dr. Dennis spoke about it a little bit, it says, which commodities do you foresee has um, having would have an edge, an opportunity to perform better in the U.S. market for the next 20 years? So this person wants to know what are the products or commodities that would do well in American market that create opportunity that probably there is not enough of it. Maybe people are asking for it, they're buyers for it, but there are no sellers for that. So do you, any of you know any of such commodity or product? I, I mentioned one, cassava. Correct. And, uh, I would only try to mention the, com the commodities that are not major. Like we don't want to get into a cocoa discussion or um, a cashew discussion of, of all that. Those are pretty well known. The major players participate. Um, there's always upside um, for, for cashews. 
um, depending only for the really for the process cashews, not for just raw cashews. Um, cassava, um, I would say um, mango, dried mango, uh, any product that you, if you, and I would say if you're doing research, just search on Amazon in the U.S. and you'll see what consumers are buying. That's a that's an excellent arbitrator of the product. Um, but at the same time, you you need to ask how that product is being consumed, so that you are, your your product alignment of how it's made is in alignment to the product and the type and size that it, that you're looking to sell. If you're selling directly to consumers, if you're selling to the brokers and the buyers, this network is probably one of the better platforms that eventually will connect you to a large supplier or buyer. Um, I will also say you have to be tenacious at this to, to walk into this and say you're going to find a major buyer of your product in a year or six months is delusional. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, you're going to have to uh, be known in the industry and have some shipments under your belt to scale up. Um, I, I tend to describe it as, uh, just because I'll just, since you have the, the expertise of time, the, I mean, the, the time is open here. Um, I won't mention the person's name, um, but they're part of Gore Africa and they had a deal come through, but we made it work out. We're going to get a huge amount of ads, product that they could sell. And they ran into the problem that now that they had it, they couldn't figure out what to do with it. That's an analogy of a dog chasing a fire truck and finally he catches it, meaning they hadn't worked it through step by step of if this happened for them. And so um, they almost screwed everything up. So that's why I said you, if you're shipping a product or starting to sell, you want to walk before you run with a small order. And then you will figure out if it's even profitable for you, meaning to run your own numbers. It's not up for this network or it's not up for the customer to determine are you making money selling the product? That's up to you. To you agree to the price. That's not on anyone in the network or ill or the customer to figure that out or to change the terms so it's favorable for you. You have to figure that out. Thank you, Dr. Danny. And I appreciate your your response. Now, for mm -hmm. those who are in the US and they would like to expand into Africa, a lot of <laughs> people like to trade with Africa, they want to do business in Africa, and a lot of African Americans with billions of dollars spending power. Now, I'm going to ask two questions. Um, I want you to take both of them together. Um, first, if someone wants to do business in Africa and they're in America, what should they do today? How can they secure their investment and not get into trouble? You know, that, that's, yeah, it's very important. What's, what's <laughs> okay, I'll answer this and I'll be very granular and specific. Okay, there are two ways and you could take the first way, but it may not be as beneficial for you or how long you want to be into this. You could find a African partner to carry your product. Okay, and they're in parts that you really need to trust on that side because you really don't have any legal recourse if they do not fulfill the agreement. The other more prudent course, I would say, is the, the person that was talking about Nigeria is uh, earlier, is that you probably uh, want to uh, go to Nigeria, follow the steps she actually gave, uh, because Go Africa has followed those steps. And the steps she gave were correct, okay? In the sense of forming an entity, uh, you want to get a work permit, um, you want to go through all, you may have to find someone on your team that's Nigerian to help you to be a part of the legal entity you create in Nigeria, but without a work permit in Nigeria, I'll name the countries, Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Kenya, um, uh, Tanzania, you need to have a work permit to be on the bank account where the funds are deposited. If you don't, you do not have legal standing. The work permit covers all that as well, meaning that you can work there, you can have a bank account, you can have residency. So you can enforce first, an agreement on a partner locally, same as you can here. 
So when you don't do that, that's where the scams and all the other things, negative things you've heard about uh, originate from because you did not have standing, for example. And I'll give you a very detailed example since I'm assuming you asked him for one. Had a partner, not a partner of mine, but someone else, um, and this is not even US, it was a person trying to do something in Cultivar. Uh, the person gave them some advice and this lady had them send the funds to Germany and they didn't pay, blah, blah, blah. And they tried to have legal resourcing in, in Cortivar. And I essentially told the person because the funds went to Europe, <laughs> they don't have any standing in Cortivar. So that's the example of that you, you need to really do your homework before you engage in a transaction. And you should be trusting, but to a point. And Thank if not, then just go for legal representation in the country. Thank you, Dr. Danny. Um, so the second part of that question is, I'm in Africa. I want to do business in America. Doing business in America does not necessarily mean that I want to bring product into the US. Maybe I want to be a distributor for a company in America. Maybe I want to be a local agent. Maybe I want to supply you know, commodities. Maybe I just want to help in one of the, in any of the value chain. And knowing fully well that the negative connotation in Africa, like you just talked about, and we all know that it's not, it's not all Africa that is that. It's just the notion that some people carry about Africa. Now, what advice would you give an African who is in Africa? What should they do? How should they position themselves to be able to maximize opportunity? Somebody is interested in doing business with you, how do you present yourself better to that person so that he can take you serious and not see a red flag? Okay. I'll hear my question. Um, I'll, I'll start with the first top off of the question. You want to be a distributor of a product made in the US or Asia or what have you in Africa. Okay. First part, most most websites of a partner of a distributor or someone with product has on their link be a partner or a distributor. You can submit an application, but before you submit an application, be sure that you, you have a legal entity, um, you have all the questions that they're asking for on the application. You have a website, you can tell them how they're going to distribute a product. The way distribution distributors work here in the US, there are a lot of different levels and different programs. Um, for example, I'll just give you an example, just hardware, HP, uh, uh, being a partner for HP in Africa or what have you, uh, or Hanoi in, in, in Africa. They will essentially ask you do, what expertise you have in their area and what do you want to carry of their product and how much inventory of their product can you pay up front to hold. That's generally how distribution agreements work. They want a minimum commitment from you the product and you have to build or prove to them a business case of, of doing that and um, of having their product. Most startups, meaning most new net new products that don't have a penetration, they will easily look at you because they have really nothing to lose because you've paid for their product. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out and they move on. So th that's how I would say is that you best present yourself first and pretty much know um, how are you going to succeed in selling that product? Hopefully that answers your question about at least the distributor piece. It did, it did. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Yes, yes, thank you for pointing people in that direction. Do uh, we have a time to add more comments or are we look right. running out of time, looks oh, like? <laughs> right, Mijan, yes, I have your own question, but go ahead. Yes, just uh, uh, just for the you know the final thought, um, I would say uh, first of all, uh, I've been in a position where I actually receiving you know the proposals from overseas, including Africa, um, wanting to do business here in the U.S. or looking for partners here in, in the U.S. or some some cases actually investors in the U.S. Um, so. 
if I were uh, in that position who actually be your partner and then also write a checkbook, you know, the, for your business to do the business, um, you in Africa and me in here, uh, I'll just to go through uh, what's known here is really uh, looking at your really value proposition, but you have to really think from the, the, uh, the other side of a point of view. So uh, not like you know, your product has a great potential and et cetera, but from my point of view, what would be the really return on investment uh, per se? And what is my risk actually involved here? And that need to be really um, uh, well responded and then thought out and then planned. I will actually see whether you know, your capacity or you do have really the plan really well thought out and then prepared, uh, can you actually answer all those questions that I have for you? Then, you know, I can start the business with you. So always think about from uh, investors or partners or whoever that you are trying to do with the business from their perspective or point of view, and then they do things differently. They do check things differently, right? So once you are really ready, then uh, we're looking for the potential to, you know, make things happen. And another final thought that I would say is that um, in terms of food, or are we talking about commodity and things like that? In the US, I think it would be really great for you to maximize your profit. Think more uh, about providing some value added product um, as uh, supposed to um, raw materials or uh, just the commodity stuff. I think you know, there's a very stable demand for, for that as well. However, you do know uh, when you actually added value and the creating something, a value added product, that's when you can actually maximize your profitability. So it's the same thing, cassava, or, you know, I deal with sometimes, you know, the persimmon, which is from South Korean, you know, the agricultural product, but when it actually come to in the US, instead of selling those things as it is, think about how do you actually make it as like a chips or, but then you have to know what the uh, American consumers, uh, perceive the chip as a chip. It has a certain size, thickness, and crispness, and, and, and all that. My client cases, you know, they were failed in a way. Their texture was actually chewy, but then they call it as, a, you know, persimmon chips, right? So value-added, you know, uh, approach. I think that's something that you have to really think about. Thank you, Mijun. Thank you so much for that uh, invaluable contribution. That was relevant. Um, I have a consultant on, I see him here, uh, Lickenberg LLC. Uh, Mr. Olubemi, Olubenga Ojo is an attorney, is a trade consultant. Um, uh, if, he's, if he's available, I would like for him to, you know, give uh, one or two comments. If I know I'm just putting him on the spot. If he's, he's available, please leave a, leave a comment. I would like for you to say one or two things because I know you have, a, you have experience to share. Now, my next question is, how do you know when your product is market ready for the international sphere? What are the major benchmark in getting your product market ready done? I know we have spoken a little bit of this here and there, but if either of you wants to comment, you are free to do so. What are the major benchmark? What, what, how do you know that you're ready, ready, ready? Uh, Either of you can take it if you want. Otherwise, I'll, I'll leave a comment as well on that talk, on that question. Um, I would I would say um, <laughs> there. Um, this is the hard part that um, most people run into. Um, no one can actually tell you when you're ready. Okay, um, because it depends on the market. If you're looking for someone to say your product is perfect and ready. It could be perfect and ready and still don't sell anywhere. It's just a matter of just choice and timing and positioning. Um, the best I can say is that um, you could, if it's to import a food product, is ready means that it's FDA certifiable. It has all the branding and, and the, the calorie count and stuff on the product. If it's something like shea butter or something at the consumer level, it's about presentation. If it's something that's bulk, then it's really up to the, the buyer itself, the, a major player, broker, or who have you, that is purchasing your product. Um, the best, what we do here to ask 
if it's a product or something or offering, if we lose the deal, uh, we simply ask why we lost. <laughs> and by asking why we lost, if the person is honest, they're going to tell you overpriced, it was this, it was that. And you eventually uh, get to the truth sooner or later, the trial or error. That would be my fair answer to you. Thank you, Dr. Danny. Uh, Mi Yang, do you want to chime in? Oh, I mean, it is always his answer is still impeccable. You know, being ready, <laughs> being ready, I think it's <laughs> oh, impeccable. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I think the being ready is a different, um, as he pointed out, uh, is it just ready to really ship? You know, is that what we means? But from my word, what I preach and I teach to the client is being ready is you done your all the homework. And the very important part of that is like you really uh, figure it out whether there is a market for your product or not. And then it, it's going to give you the profit or not. Uh, it doesn't mean that the, you have a product that could be a profitable and then sold here in the market. So uh, I also include that as a being ready, you know, expert ready. But technically, I mean, there is a compliance issues and, you know, logistically you have a freight forward all figured it out and pricing and, and all uh, that can be called you are being ready. But more importantly before, I always uh, preach that, you know, you, you do your market and make sure you, you know the market that you are coming in, you fully understand Understand. And there's many ways to, to learn that. I mean, it's you can do self-study. I don't know how long it would take. And you can live here in this market long enough and, you know, experience and you can figure it out. But the most uh, best, fast, effective way is work with the experts who are experts in their uh, area. So that's kind of like an initial investment. You have to do it. But, you know, that will really guarantee and, and uh, build a foundation for your long-term success. Thank you so much, Miji, and thank you. I hope you've all been blessed. I hope this has been impactful. Um, we have a few more minutes to the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, if you have a question, we can still take uh, one or two of your questions. And so with, with my experience, what I've, what I've also learned is that uh, if you are looking to export or import either way, you need people who are tested and trusted. And this is why at the US Africa Trade and Business Network, we have a network of consultants, people we work with, people with integrity, people that we can vouch for, who can help you move your product either way and succeed. So take advantage of this opportunity. Learn uh, more about what we do at the usafricahub.com. Like I said, each September we host uh, B2B uh, matchmaking and expo during the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, moving forward every month, we're going to be hosting this webinar. We're going to bring other uh, experts to come and, and share with us and let the two continents come together so we can integrate and, 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 and make our continent stronger for it. I see my brother has come on. That's uh, Mr. Olubenga Ojo. I, the reason why I wanted him to come is because he has uh, is a, is a, is a trade consultant and is an attorney as well. He has a platform that we're working together on this platform. So what we've realized is there is always a breakdown when you want to come. I mean, we were at an event together and people came from Africa with products they wanted to sell in the U.S. They spent time, spent thousands of dollars. To, to buy their ticket, hotel, or logistics, and the product they're bringing to sell is not presentable to any buyer because nobody has prepped them, nobody has prepared them. And so the things that we do, we do it out of passion. So I want him to speak about the Lickenberg platform because that platform is going to help you move products from point A to point B and get it to market. So Mr. Joe, please go yeah. ahead. Thank you. I know you're a talker, but please, you know. Yeah, I'm going to make it snappy, <laughs> very brief. Okay, thank you for having me. And um, I say to our panelists today, um, you've done a very great job at um, um, creating an expository about what is going on with international trade. Um, it's not just about US and Africa, on the global scene. 
Okay, um, I'm going to go straight to uh, what the trade platform that Lakenberg is offering is able to provide. So the trade platform is um, um, structured on a legal framework that protects both the buyers and the sellers. So if you're jumping on the platform as an exporter, either from the US, from Africa, from Asia, from wherever you are, you have to meet some thresholds that are acceptable in terms of standard and quality and ability to meet quantity demand timelessly um, to the buyer, that's the importer. And then if you are the importer, you need to be able to meet some requirements um, regarding payment. Most importantly, that's what is most important to an exporter. They want to hear that, okay, um, what I sold has been paid for. So um, the legal framework has um, a contract on the platform. So on the platform, you can list your products, whatever you want to sell. You can get guidelines on how to meet standard and quality requirements, regulatory standards, uh, legal requirements in um, the destination country. And aside to that, you get matched with a buyer. So if you're looking for a buyer for your products, if you list it, uh, if it's something that's in high demand, you get matched with the buyer within 30 days of listing. And then you now are able to sign a trade contract. So the trade contract is enforceable against you and against the buyer, that's the importer. So Lichtenberg takes the responsibility of supervising both parties to ensure that you meet all these conditions and the terms that you sign on the contract. And um, that's most importantly, Lichtenberg is structured in different territories. Lichtenberg is in London, it covers the UK territory, it's in Lagos, Nigeria, it's in Washington DC, California, and then the UAE. So whatever transactions you do across these regions are enforceable on your behalf or against you in a situation whereby you are in default of the terms and conditions. And then uh, most importantly to the exporter, like I said, is the issue of payment. You want to get paid. So we monitor the end-to-end -end of the trade value chain to ensure that um, the terms and conditions are met, that you meet the terms and conditions on standard, on quality, on time of delivery, on uh, what you say you're going to deliver. And then I meet the terms and conditions on the payment and then on meeting the payment time of sleep. And um, so basically on the trade platform, you have the legal protection and you have the business opportunity to do business as well. So those are the two privileges um, that the trade platform affords you. And um, I'm happy to tell you that um, the play trade platform is listed with the US Department of Commerce in Nigeria. So the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria has list, listed Lakenberg as a legal service provider. And as a legal service provider, um, we offer the international trade consultancy, so the platform is listed with them as well. So um, any inquiries you want to make, either as a business person trying to do business in the United States, if you get to the United States Embassy in Nigeria, they're going to tell you um, you're able to do business with Lakenberg and then you have that comfort. And then if you are trying to do business from the United States to Africa, especially in Nigeria, you have that legal representation as well um, in Nigeria because Lakenberg cites the International Trade Consultancy as a law practice in Lagos, Nigeria. And uh, the, the uh, point that um, my other panelist, the, the gentleman, I didn't take his name, had mentioned the issue of setting up a structure in Nigeria, getting a business permit, getting market entry, opening bank accounts, and everything. The end to end of doing business in Nigeria is handled by the Lakenberg Law Practice in Nigeria. And then we do the same thing for Africans or Nigerians that are looking to set up in the United States. So, um, we met with um, the Department of Commerce International Trade Administration Office um, in January because we had written to the Secretary of Commerce of the United States last year about how we want to impact backward economics in America. And um, they put us in meeting with the um, 
the United States Department of Commerce, International Trade Administration. And part of what we committed to doing is to help businesses from America to be able to access and penetrate uh, the nooks and crannies in uh, Africa. And uh, we have the legal structure. Okay, thank you. I don't want to take much of your time. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know, right? <laughs> That's timely information. This, these are the missing link. These are the missing link and with, with, with people, organizations like yourself, uh, the U.S. Africa is taking the lead. We're bringing resources together to be able to facilitate trade with our continent. Our continent should do have more numbers. When you look at the trade numbers uh, with the U.S., you find out that the numbers are not encouraging, despite being the biggest uh, consumer market. And part of the problem is lack of adequate pr preparations. So platforms like this, Forums like this would help you to be able to be that next exporter, to be that nurse partner that people are looking for. There are a lot of Americans who are looking to do business in Africa. There are a lot of black Americans with trillion dollar spending power looking to connect with Africans. They just need to know that we are ready. We just have to do our due diligence. We're going to email all of you. Uh, everything we discussed today, we're going to prepare it. Be on the lookout every month. We're coming back. We're going to be, you know, doing this one more time. Now, before we go, um, I like to say that um, we had originally planned to host a video matchmaking session. Zoom wasn't meant to be the platform for this event, but we had a lot of you reaching out to us saying. Uh, you sign up, you didn't get your registration, uh, there are too many steps. So we, we felt we didn't want to rob people of the opportunity to enjoy the webinar. So we took the event away from Accelerate, we brought it to Zoom. So what we intend to do is we're going to go look into that platform and see how we can make it easier. So for this session, even though we had planned to hold that B2B, we're not going to be holding the B2B session in this month, but we would hold it in July. That is a promise. And each one of you who had indicated interest would be allowed to be part of that. And you also need to understand that we need enough diverse mix of people to be able to have successful matchmaking. We wanted to ensure that. But the good news is we have uh, other matchmaking options, which is a matchmaking service. It's a flagship service that saves you valuable time and money by helping you to identify potential agent distributors and strategic partners in Africa and the US without you having to travel. We would do the work. We would identify you a prospect. We would reach out to them on your behalf. We would prepare your profile. We send it to them. If they show interest, we would set up a meeting, we would facilitate that meeting just to protect you. So if you are interested in that service, our consultant will be reaching out to each and every one of you on this note. And so on this note, on this note, I want to really, really thank each and every one of you for staying to the end of this webinar. I'm going to quickly run through the list of everyone, our partner, Leo Africa, who we're working with to 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 host um, a trade a trade um, a trade mission to to Nigeria and other African country sometimes in 2013. I just want to thank you for all the work that you did. I want to thank myself, you know, for taking the courage to do this, and all of my team. Everyone is on the call. I want to thank Nathaniel. Our, our associate director in Africa. I see Baranga, our, um, our country representative. I see um, our country representative in Liberia, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Lagos. I see some of you. Because of time, I'm not going to go through all of your names. Thank you so much for coming. I want to thank you, Mi Young, for taking the time, even though you are not an African, um, but you know, you, you, you said you're going to do this and you made it happen. I just want to thank you so much. I also want to thank, uh, Dr. Danny Beach, you know, 
uh, is my brother is in is an African. If we have to trace, even though he does a lot of business in Ghana, but if we have to trace that tree, I would say it's from Nigeria. So it's my Nigerian brother. My sister, Sister Bolanle Emmanuel, with the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. I mean, I just spoke to you about this this morning and you took it on and you did a great job. Thank you so much, all of you. We thank you. We ask you to please follow us. Uh, you can see on the screen, we are at US Africa Hub on Twitter, on Instagram, and our website is usafricahub.com. I thank you so much. Uh, we're going to turn on all the videos so anyone can see anyone. Uh, we were a little bit scared of, you know, Zoom bombing. We never wanted to touch Zoom because of all the news we had about bombing and things. So we had to log the video. Uh, please forgive us. Um, but I think, Admi, you can allow everybody to share their video. I don't know how to do that from here, but if anyone wants to open up their video, you're free to do so. As we have come to the end of this program, we thank you. I see you, my brother, Ralph Charles. You're cruising in your car. Thank you. I see Toin. Uh, be, uh, you know, keeping safe with your, with your, um, uh, okay, Ishmael, I see Ishmael, thank you so much, I, I, I was going to call on you uh, earlier on, but thank you so much, Sister Toyin, I see you, thank you for coming, great job with what you do, maybe one of these days we can have you come on the platform and share with the people, I see you, Sister Omoshala Elizabeth, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Mary Nkope. Thank you, Whitney Presley. Thank you, Beranga. That's uh, uh, one of our country representatives. These are trusted men. Thank you, Jonathan. That's our marketing partner, doing a great job. He's a consultant in trade and marketing for anyone looking to expand into the US. There's an angle to every approach. From a marketing perspective, generating leads, that's the man to contact. Um, and. I'm sure one of these days he's going to come on to also speak as well. I see my brother Edward uh, Olutoke is the vice, is the president of Ikeja Chambers of Commerce. Uh, he's one of the partners we're working with uh, as well. We have uh, one of my colleague at US Africa, Oluwafemi Banjo. Great job. I see our associate director Nathaniel Kevin Kalufo. Thank you, Lotha Soliwan. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I know you had reached out to me earlier on, but I'm glad you're able to connect. Shidi Olayemi, Ryan, Adenike, Esther, Samuel, Ngwigbe, thank you all for taking the time to join us. Uh, my brother, I see your face, Edward. Great job, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope, um, I hope it was worth it for all of you. Uh, if you have any specific questions, take the time to leave your comment. We're going to look into every comment. We're going to act on it. Now, since we're going to be doing this each month, if there's any particular area that you would like us to focus on, please let us know. And also we would like for you to tell us what we can do to make this better for the next one. Uh, your feedback are very, very important to us. And feel free to connect with anyone here. And if there's anyone you would like to connect with, reach out to us, we will do the connection. That is our job, we match make. We are a matchmaker, so we will do that for all of you. Uh, follow us, US Africa Hub. And thank you so much for coming. Um, God bless you all, God bless you all, uh, great job. All right, I see one or two comments. Let me make sure I did not miss anything. Okay, you like to connect with Jonathan Victor Abu? Absolutely. We're going to get that done for you. Absolutely. Baranga, yes. Uh, Tulsa is the president of Youth Service Africa. That's our brother. That's our partner in, um, in um, La Liberia. Benin. Benin, 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 yes. Thank you so much. Forgive me. Thank you. Thank for you. Thank you for coming. Awesome, awesome. My brother, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. Whitney Presley, thank you. All right, now I think uh, I have.
have to make sure. Okay, Mary Kubre, absolutely. Uh, we will definitely get you connected with uh, the three of them. Um, absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. People, people really want to stay, right? People love this so much. People don't want to go. Oh, wow. I love the vibe. I see you all still staying on. But thank you all. Uh, Paul Esefolukwe, thank you so much for coming. I'm not sure if I'd mentioned your name. Thank you so much for coming. Omoshola Elizabeth, thank you so much for coming as well. Ryan, thank you so much. All right. All right, thank you all. Um, appreciate your time. We'll see you again. God bless and bye-bye.